Hello, everyone. Welcome to the LaFrance Paradigm. I'm your host, Robert LaFrance, and this is where we learn and share strategies for an impact. If you're not following the LaFrance Paradigm, hit subscribe or follow. Make sure you hit the bell icon so you never miss an episode. And make sure that you follow Paul T., all right, my co-host for today. He's going to pronounce his last name because he's got a lot of letters, almost all of them from the alphabet. But we're going to go over a lot of cool things today. We were talking before we recorded as I was handling my mic issues, sweating, started recording without recording. Uh, we're going to be talking about how to leverage podcasts successfully for your brand and business or whatever your story is and the uh, benefits of that and how it will really help. And then as well as his book that he's He's going to tell it, but I'm really looking for it. It's called Beyond Human Sapien. And if you like ancient aliens or consciousness, we're going back as far as human sapiens have been. I think you're going to really like how he's writing and publishing this book. Paul, can you give our listeners your story? Robert, thanks for having me on the show, man. So I started the Beyond Homo Sapien podcast a uh, couple years ago, back after I was still in the military at the time, um, and uh, I was going through a really kind of dark phase in my life. I was experiencing what we call a spiritual awakening, which is kind of where you're having this epiphany that you're a spiritual being having this human experience. And for a lot of people, it's something that can be very confusing. It's something where it's almost like you're realizing that you live inside of a matrix or something. And um, for me, all the shit hit the fan at the same time. And, um, you know, I broke up with my ex-wife. I moved halfway across the world. Um, I lost, I changed most of my friends around. Uh, I was in the army at the time and I, I changed uh, units around. Like literally everything shifted for me during this time. And uh, I thought I was going kind of crazy. So um, I began to explore more into this. I began to do a lot of research around esoteric philosophy, the law of attraction and uh, metaphysics and just all this stuff that I was really into. I studied philosophy back in college, but this was kind of a different, um, different paradigm, so to speak. And uh, I uh, was getting into podcasting at the time. I had a show already about Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, but I felt like that wasn't really what I was called to really do. Like um, I've been doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for about 10 years off and on, and uh, I love it, but I just felt like there was a lot more that I had to talk about. So I started Beyond Homo Sapien to talk about everything I was learning and experiencing related to the evolution of consciousness and the evolution of humanity. Because what I think is happening right now, man, is the human species evolved and no one noticed, no one realized that we all kind of upgraded and leaped forward into this new paradigm. So um, so I started the podcast to explore that topic and kind of interview experts who knew a lot more than me and uh, get, get out there and start to learn. And what I found is that this is actually one of the oldest processes of all time, that this process of awakening or uh, back in the ancient days, it was called initiation because that's kind of what it feels like. A lot of times it's an initiatory experience, similar to being in the military, but for uh, spiritual side of things. <laughs> and it's really a period where, you know, shit hits the fan in your life and all of your karma kind of comes to deal with you at once. So you can clear it up and kind of evolve to that next level. So I started the podcast to kind of, uh, to find myself in all of this. And eventually it's grown into now where I can kind of hold space for people who are going through that experience, help them know that they're not alone and help them know that, hey, this is not only something that's happening to you, but it's happened to me, it's happened to a lot of other people. And it's actually one of the oldest uh, processes in history. It used to be a sacred process that happened during adulthood. You know, when a person uh, kind of graduated into that next level of life, this was administered at places like, you know, Eleusis or in the ancient mysteries in um, South America or all over the world. So anyway, it's kind of a long rant, but that's what the book is going to be about. That's what the podcast is about. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you having me on to share, share that message. And if I didn't say thank you already, I'm going to say it right now because I'm so stoked. You said so many things, man. I think we're about to become best friends and practice karate in the garage, dude, because you, we have a lot in common. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Like, that's why I'm bit, yes, made, bit, making big movements over here because I'm like, holy shit. Um, 
so you uh, wow i also went through a gnarly divorce dude that was the pretty much beginning of my awareness my self awareness you know my every you know whether it was the military mindset the people that i was around everything like obviously we're capable of doing amazing things we have incredible potential that people you know either don't tap into or tap into very li limited or think that they are tapping into but you know when you transcend like when you're doing the things that you're talking about when you move on to that next level and you graduate up you look back you're like oh wow i'm really just starting to peek into this and so like i really needed to kind of look around and look at myself and like listen i'm getting a lot of feedback you know i'm going to say feedback as a blanket term everybody receives feedback and I was starting to look at this feedback. I'm like, is this really me or is this my environment? And then I started to do work, you know, so I'm like, I mean, you don't get to where you are. You don't get to where we are unless you do some work. You know, you don't find yourself diving in these topics unless you're doing the work and you're having a calling towards something greater for some motivation that is in within you, within all of us, within this consciousness that we share. And so like you, I started my journey, started going through. And man, I've had, I had an exist existential crisis not too long ago when I'm like, wow, are we in the matrix? Or am I a greater being, being like projected into this physical, physical body of which only these five senses are able to, you know, process and deliver data to me as an experiencer. But what happens when we go past this, this, realm of reality that we're here to experience in this physical form when you transcend that and become pure being you know that's where i'm at right now and that's heavy and i'm like super diving into that so you got at least one new follower man and that's me <laughs> uh well i'm glad to hear that man and yeah that's it i mean that's i'm glad that uh we could have this chat because yeah that's really what I went through. And um, again, just want to hold space for you and anyone else and just say like, hey, you're not crazy. That is the path. And it's actually the most sacred tradition of all time, this evolution of consciousness. And it doesn't make people like you or me better than someone else. It's just like we're into a different thing. It's like we're, uh, in, we're down a certain rabbit hole in the matrix that other people might not ever find. But when you do find it, and then you start to connect with other people who are on that same wavelength, you're like, aha, you too. Oh, her too. Oh, them too. Oh, wow. We're all in this together. And um, the thing is too, is when I was first starting my podcast, when I was first kind of going through this, I was completely alone. I had just gone through this terrible divorce. Um, I just moved again, like halfway across the world with the military um didn't have anyone like that was literally the reason why one of the main reasons i started my podcast and i was so passionate about it uh back in like 2018 2019 because i was totally alone it was like that was my way of connecting with people and um what i learned man was that again that was kind of a part of it like every single person that i've talked to who's gone through a spiritual awakening they had that as well <laughs> or they lost all their friends or they changed groups or they uh, had some sort of a breakup happen. Um, and then they went through a period of loneliness. And it's in that period of loneliness where the, the real uh, emergence happens. That's where the real growth happens. That's where a lot of research gets done. And um, you really kind of find yourself, but it's a, it's a harrowing time, you know? And uh, in esoteric philosophy, there's a concept called the guardian on the threshold which is or which is basically the watcher who uh, guards the pathway to the higher levels of consciousness. And during the process of initiation, the initiate meets the guardian on the threshold and has to basically confront that entity. But the entity, what it is, is uh, just a manifestation of all the darkness within yourself. But a lot of people report that as almost like a demon that they have to face. It feels like something that's showing up in, you know, your dreams or in states of meditation, or just like there's something inside that's trying to, you know, hold you back. But it's it's this, shadow uh, work almost. this watcher, this guardian on the threshold. Yeah, it's the shadow work. So um, that's what I had to do was, you know, transmute the shadow and integrate it. And that's really the thing. It's like the 
you know, the guardian on the threshold, it's not something to be uh, scared of because it's you. That's the whole point. It's your darkness. It's your shadow that you have to then integrate and transmute into the light. And then, then it becomes your best friend. And uh, you start to realize like, wow, I'm, you know, I'm an amazing being. But what I found is like, you go through that darkness, you go through that period and you kind of transmute what you need to do. And then what happens after that is you then start to experience the, the good side of it. It's like all of the good catches up with you too. So you deal with the shadow, you kind of let that go, you do the healing. And then on the other side of that, it's like, oh, also 10 times the good comes back to you as well. So it's like, it's a time where you got to deal with your shit and deal with the bad karma. But then once that's done, all of the good stuff also catches up. So that's the good news. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, it's all about, you know, just kind of keep going, forgiving yourself, and uh, yeah, really knowing like, hey, I'm not going crazy. Again, this is something a lot of people go through, uh, quite a few actually. The more that I go down this path, the more I realize like we are very far from alone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah. yeah, that's what the podcast is about. You know, when you're saying, when you're talking about going crazy, how I was feeling was like, uh, my, my friend put this a really good way. He said, he said, maintain mental integrity. And so I was like, huh, you know, I feel like I'm not able or I'm having a hard time maintaining mental integrity for a variety of reasons, you know? And so like, it's hard when you have an environment, no matter the environment and you're getting feedback from loved ones or people, your peers, whatever, and you start, and you start to lose that mental, mental integrity. And the, what I've learned through this process is that's almost like part of the process is that you have to like rediscover your yourself yourself like who you are and and not shift in that and then when you have that posture and that presence and more than just like a ego sense an identification sense what box you place your in or yourself in like more of like a who you are as a being and what you're capable of and how you're in the driver's seat of everything um, it really adds a little bit of a posture and like, or it definitely has posture and confidence into what you're doing. And then you're able to be more aware of everything around you, this world around you. And part it, what helped me too, is, you know, you brought up jujitsu. I just got back into jujitsu. And so for me, it's like very, you know, not only is it act, activity and exercise, but it's all, also very like relatable to life, you know, the fluidity, you know, uh, mechanics, the push pull, you know, like to go with the flow. And I'm, I'm super excited that I, I'm jumping back into it. I used to do it a lot in high school. And so now I'm like three months back in and I'm really like, oh yeah, you know, I'm just seeing all the, all the clues, you know, it's cool. Dude, that's amazing. Yeah. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is really like the foundation of everything for me, I would say. And you're right. It has so many relatable things to life and entrepreneurship and business or podcasting or spiritual development or just any of these things like one of the main things that you'll hear time and time again in jujitsu it's like it's all about being consistent it's all about just showing up and just doing your best and if you get your butt kicked cool come back the next day no problem like whatever like it's not it's a uh, if you lose if you get tapped out cool you're gonna get tapped out you know a thousand million times <laughs> come back the next day you no, and uh, it's just all about consistency. I mean, that's life. It's like, hey, you make mistakes. Cool. Keep showing up. Everyone's made a mistake. You know, if you make a mistake in business, cool. Time to fix it and come back the next day. But <laughs> it's all about that, you know, the mental toughness and that mindset. Yeah, I, I'm, I try not to use mistake at all anymore. Everything is a lesson learned. I'm just constantly learning everything, you know, and we're going to learn more lessons than we than we don't. You know, <laughs> we're going to have more failures than we yep. do successes, but that's what it's all about. Yeah, man, a hundred percent. That's cool. And so like, where did you go or where are you learning? Um, like, you know, are you, are you, what books are you reading? What are you, what are you using as resources to dive into this topic? Oh yeah. So, uh, quite a few, um, I've got a bookshelf right behind me. You can't really see it, but, uh, I'd say, one of the best uh, authors you can get started with on this topic is definitely Manly Hall. I don't know if you've read any of his books before. Uh, have you heard of Manly Hall? I have not. I've, I've not. Right now I'm uh, diving into a lot of Maharishi Mahesh Yogi and um, 
Yeah. Um, and so, like, I'm reading his, like, it's like The Secret of Being, I think. I, I can't remember. But that's, like, real deep shit, dude. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. That's awesome. Um, Manly Hall, like, this is his most well-known book. It's called The Secret Teachings of All Ages. It's a uh, absolutely massive. It's basically a encyclopedia of the esoteric secrets of the world and all philosophies all over the world. And um, mainly he wrote around 130 different books over the course of his life. He died, I think, in like 1991 or, or 1990 or something. Uh, but he uh, he wrote this book when he was 27, I think, or 28, which is crazy. <laughs> and uh, it's an absolute dictionary, basically, of all the secret teachings of all over the world. It's absolutely amazing. And um, and his book, Initiates of the Flame, is really one of the ones that spoke to me the most. I think I have it over here somewhere. But uh, yeah, let me, let me grab this. Um, yeah, this book, Initiates of the Flame very short book. I think it's like $4 on Amazon. So <laughs> definitely grab this book if you're into this stuff. But yeah, it's basically, again, all about kind of the tradition of what we call initiation, or these days is being called spiritual awakening, basically this concept of, again, like realizing that you're awake in the video game, that you're in the matrix, and you can create things, and you can have control over the environment to an extent. And that's a really powerful thing to kind of contemplate and get into. So, um, yeah, really into his books. Uh, the Doctrine and Ritual of High Magic by Life is Levy is an amazing book about this topic. He's uh, from the 1800s. He wrote that book. Um, absolutely love that book. That's probably my favorite one. Um, another really good book is uh, let me right here is a Anacalypsis by Godfrey Higgins. This book um, also from, I think the, like the Civil War times, he wrote this like early 1800s. And um, this book is basically about what he, what the original religion of the world, which is this, what we're talking about here. Um, I mean, long, long story short, obviously, very long, very long book, but um, I'm not done with it, as you can see, but uh, <laughs> really good book. And um, he's kind of one of the original guys who kind of linked together this whole concept that all the religions are saying the same thing. And that's really and that's what Manly Hall writes about, too. Uh, but Manly was really inspired by Godfrey Higgins a lot. But um, H.P. Blavatsky is another one one who wrote about this in her book, The Secret Doctrine. Um, and uh, it's another really good book, really, really long book that I'm working through. And they're basically all saying the same thing. But what they're saying is that all the religions of the world are saying the same thing, that at their core, they're all the same truth, which is that God is everywhere at once. Consciousness is God. The human being is divine. Um, you know, everything is God, like you are God, I'm God you know, this, this microphone I'm talking into is a, is God in one form or another. Like, this is what Hinduism says is that, you know, the universe is consciousness vibrating, basically, that Shiva is out there somewhere in the, in the cosmos chanting Om, and that is what generates the world. But of course, what these guys are all talking about is that that's an allegory. Shiva is not actually out there chanting anything. Shiva is a energy, is a thing that kind of you know, almost like a program in the video game, so to speak. It's a, it's a way that the video game is generated, but it's all kind of pointing to this same idea that is expressed in the Fibonacci spiral or in sacred geometry, which is really that we're inside of a, a kind of a living mind of sorts where we can create and we can be and uh, yeah, it's all around us. So yeah, a lot of books about that. I mean, there's a lot that are written these days, but for me, it's really powerful to read stuff from like hundreds of years ago that's saying the same shit that you and me are saying today, because that just kind of further cements it as like, oh, wow, this is not only is this nothing new, it's actually the oldest teaching of all time. <laughs> Apparently. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah. And that's what I that's what I really like, too, about how I got into it. You know, I brought up um, the book is called Science of Being and Art of Living. And um, it's by, like I said, uh, it's on Transcendental Meditation, and it's by Maharishi Mahesh Yogi. And it's the same thing. What really got me interested in attending Maharishi International University is the fact that 
it's you know that was it's ancient wisdom from it's ancient yogi wisdom that's been passed down thousands of years you know and not to mention it's an accredited college that the gi bill covers that the va covers you know what i mean so it's like dude, that's amazing as I, oh yeah dude i'm super stoked about it and so like this hit me yesterday when i was talking to my fiance i was like I was like, you know, it's cool to like go to workshops and learn from people and like, you know, you know, Tony Robbins, he's out there changing lives. And, you know, Dr. Joe Dispenza, Wim Hof, these people are out there talking, speaking their truth from their experience and their research and science and stuff like that. But it's really like for what we're talking about, the subjects that we're talking about, it's really interesting to identify that there's some it's accredited content. You know, what I mean, there is an academic structure talking about the things that we're discussing right now. Because one of the biggest yep. things that was that was hesitant for me, you were talking about how that gentleman wrote that book at 27 years old. I just turned 33 yesterday. And between getting out of the Navy at like 25, 26, and then, you know, everything between, I had some serious limited beliefs where I was like, man, I'm not a, I'm not a yogi, you know, I'm like, a, I'm a white guy. I'm getting out of the Navy. I'm trying to make some money doing what I love. You know what I mean? But like, I had all these limitations that I had that like, didn't make me feel credible to talk about it but I totally forgot about how you know the teacher learns the most like the teacher learns from his students and the greatest reward to a teacher is to go out and teach the teachings you know what I mean so I really allowed my environment and the feedback that I was getting from my environment that negativity the limited mindset to kind of withhold you know to delay me and what I wanted to finding that absolute love love is God, just like you're talking about all the things are God, you know, but it said that love is God and that feeling that you get when you're doing something creative that you're really passionate about that energy that emits from your heart field. And you're talking about everything's vibration, you affect the world around you up to 50 feet, you know, all around. And so we're talking about, you know, the a greater being being out there, saying chanting, Oh, out there and everything is a vibration, the tables a vibration, you're a vibration, the planet is a vibration, all of us collected consciousness affect the vibration of the planet. And so it's just incredible shit to know and everybody it's not, I don't mean shit to degrade it, but it's just like so big and heavy that when you start diving into it and you're like, wait a second, let me try to talk to you about this. And it can almost look, you look, you're like wiry almost, you know, like, let me try to process this. And then to someone who's not ready to listen to it, you might look like you're cracked up. <laughs> you're like, no, let, yeah. let me tell you this. Yeah. The rabbit hole gets deeper though. Uh, <laughs> the more I, I go down it. The more I go down it, you realize just how deep all this stuff is and uh, just how long it's all been around. Because, I mean, it's the truth. I mean, obviously, I'm a bit, I'm convinced of it at this point. But uh, if it's the truth, then it should appear everywhere, right? So, yeah, of course, it's going to appear everywhere. That's kind of the, what I've come to. What really, what really kind of like hurt me a little bit was like when I was connecting like the love and compassion and like the effect of of you know expanding our consciousness and like what kind of mindset or people what kind of person you become and how you affect the world around you and then how much like uh as a veteran it hurt me because i enlisted in the military very you know i support our country in the you know being a patriot and fighting for our rights and all the stuff and then to kind of look at like the military industrial complex and seeing what that's doing and like some of the things that have happened out there, I might, you know, whether or not it's just hard to be a military member and then also kind of be become aware of this type of uh, information and then be like, whoa, what was I eating before? You know, what kind of truth was I yep. eating before? Yeah, me too, man. I had the same sort of experience. And uh, a lot of everyone, I've, every single military member who's on this path that I've talked to has had that same thing. <laughs> and um, I think that that's actually the transmutation. Like the way that I see it is, you know, when, when we transmute, we transmute uh, mentally and spiritually. So the energy of the military, for example, the military industrial complex is an energy. So it's something that is with us for whatever reason it called to us energetically right so we joined and that uh frequency is where we were at and our vibration was matching those around us and then we raised it so then we no longer are there but the mental energy is still there because it's in your head so your mind is a creative force right so everything that's happening inside of your head these thoughts these feelings these emotions this is energy that you still carry from that experience 
from the greater web of the military industrial complex energy. So us talking about it here, you sharing what you just said, that is a transmutation of that energy because now you're taking that energy, you're reprogramming it. You're saying, oh, wow, I don't think that all this energy that I took in, I don't think that's the way to think anymore. Now I think like this. Now that's what you're putting out there into the world. So you're actually giving it a channel to transmute. And then that energy can dissipate and it can go out there into the consciousness and can transmute because energy doesn't go, doesn't disappear. It only changes forms, right? So it's the same thing here. It's like, you've got to talk about it. We've got to transmute that energy. And that's one of the main reasons I love podcasting kind of as a spiritual practice, because it allows that transmutation to happen place at scale. So there might be 10 military members who are listening to this, who feel exactly the same way that we do. Those 10 people now are also transmuting this through their thoughts and their emotions. They might share it with someone. Transmutation continues. You get what I'm saying? And meanwhile, you know, suddenly the world seems more peaceful than ever lately. I don't know about you, but the more that we all seem to talk about this stuff, uh, I haven't really, I mean, there's this, all this stuff happening with Russia and, and the Ukraine right now, but last I checked, it seems like they were negotiating. So that's, that's great. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think world war three is going to break out anytime soon. The way things are looking pretty sure we're going to figure this thing out. So the energy is transmuting, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, I think that is what we were called there to do. We went there to transmute that, however it looked like. And um, that's what is happening, you know, collectively. But it's not just you and me. It's every single military veteran all over the world of every military <laughs> in this together. Yeah, man. I, and I get the VA email newsletters and they're, put, they're starting to cover transcendental meditation for veterans to, um, you know, help with PTSD and everything like that. And like what, what that's really going to do to the community in the world, like the effect, it's it not only is going to help people with their own personal problems, but and connect with their inner self and become who they you know want to be and melt all that stress away and really be able to live a, a fulfilling, fulfilling life, whatever that means to them. But the, the, the energy that's going to radiate from them, through, just like you're saying, from peer to peer throughout the community around the world. And I saw in a, I watched Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind. It's a Dr. Stephen Greer movie. And he's talking about how it only takes 1% of the population to make that next shift or to, to have that impact. And so when people are talking about like, oh, you know, like, what can we do? How do I participate in it? it funny enough, it's like, yeah, you know, show yourself love and meditate. And by doing so, you're going to influence the field around you and, and do your part. And then everything as a collective conscious will progress as it should. Yeah, that's it, man. Like uh, a really great book is uh, The More Beautiful World Our Hearts Know Is Possible by Charles Eisenstein. And he talks about we're gonna have to get a, what's a book happening list right here, now. We're going to start we're, a book club. Yeah. <laughs> like you're, you're spitting knowledge. Another, so yeah. I'm like, I need to get a list this down book. after this. Yeah, sure, man. Um, This book, The More Beautiful World Our Hearts Know Is Possible by Charles Eisenstein. Um, Amazing book. And, uh, and he talks about how, more recent book, and he talks about how Right now, what's happening is we're shifting from the story of separation into the story of interbeing. So it used to be the story that we're all separate from each other. You and me are different. I'm a, you know, separate from everything else. We're moving into the story where we understand that you and me are actually the same being experiencing the world from different perspectives. So God, whatever that is, is all of us experiencing this out of billions of different views and eyes and different life stories and perspectives. So we're coming into that collective epiphany, basically. Um, amazing book. But what he talks about is that um, separation and the ego really wants you to um, really wants to say to yourself, like, oh, I've got to do something like that is the old story of separation is that. I have to do it all, that I have to save the world. I have to be the one who goes out there and does everything and does the thing. And doing more is good. Like that's one of the stories of separation is that doing more, doing a lot, like whoever does the most is the best. That's the story, right? And the new story is no, actually less is more. Uh, quality is better than quantity sort of thing. 
Uh, at the end of the day, it's better to take care of yourself and be a good example for yourself and your family and other people around you, rather than trying to go and, you know, work 20 hours a day or something crazy. Like it's better to actually slow down than to try to speed up. Like actually you, you know, talk to any successful entrepreneur, they'll tell you, you make better decisions when you slow down. Like it's the same thing in the military, you know, you, they try to teach you to relax under pressure and stuff like that. So he writes about that a lot, like, you know, and I found that to be so true, man. Like when you slow down, actually, ironically, everything goes better. If you're just trying to hustle, 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 grind, grind, grind. Oh, it's gotta be me. Like that's usually when you end up fucking it up. But if you just get out of the way and slow down and go with the, the flow, and you learn just to kind of go with it and surrender more and take days off a little more often and go for more walks in the forest and spend more time with your friends uh, and, and not put so much pressure on yourself to solve every problem. Uh, suddenly things change. It goes a lot better. <laughs> so uh, yeah, like the more you shift into that, man, the more things just kind of open up for not just you, but everyone. It's a lot more fun living that way too. Like when I, during my transition out and everything, it's like, it's like all of the heavy shit hit me all at once, you know? So it was like, so going to what you were saying about, you know, Oh, I got, I have to do all this on my own. And not only did I feel alone, but like I, that was my mindset too. And so what my adapting over, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, skills and transferable skills and characteristics that we took from our military experience. So I definitely embrace and, harness and utilize those every single day in conjunction with proper mindset like because of this time period that i'm about to describe where i was by myself trying to survive do all the things what it did was like i was just adapting overcome i was trying to move a thousand miles a minute i was like taking on so much and what i did really just was just burn myself out that much faster i was able to work for a certain amount of period of time and then i was just burned out and then now these last couple of years, I mean, my fiance isn't in the military, but like our work ethic is that, that hard work ethic that we, you know, expect in the military. And like, uh, even her, she's like, yo, I don't want to be working in this way anymore. You know what I mean? I want to be doing less in, in taking everything that you just described and how much more fulfilling and fun and healthy we are feeling this way, doing less, choosing what work or things that we end up taking on and what results are when we get to pick and choose and doing those things. And, you know, it's, if you don't, if you don't believe, if you're skeptical of what we're saying, that's fine, you know, continue on your path, learn, you know, you'll, you'll realize at some point, whether or not you're doing things right or wrong. And your body's going to tell you that whether it's cancer or like frustration or things are falling apart. But I think it's so much more fun to live life in a way and let's just remove like, hey, this has been this is wisdom that's been passed down thousands of years and people have been written, written books about it and philosophies have been built around this kind of stuff. How much more fun is your day to day if you wake up and you're like, huh, I can influence this airspace around me like I'm blowing bubbles in the water in the pool. Like, let's go out there and have some fun. Look at some people and be like, hey, are you me? Like, I, I see you in your eyes. Like, are you me? And that's how I look at it. And once I started kind of opening more into that, when I was reading the books, reading interviews between, you know, the Dalai Lama and the Archbishop, both people who have had to survive exile and genocide and just horrible, horrible experiences, but still maintain joy in their day to day life. You know, how do people do that? And I think having fun and staying true to yourself and going with the flow of things like your what I just learned or what I connected was you know, if we have a splinter in our hand, it's natural and our body does it automatically to remove that splinter from our hand. And our mind wants to do the same thing. It wants to remove the stresses naturally. And everybody, including myself, like we're all caught up on the surface three-dimensional stress. I got to do this. I got to do that, that we, we overlook and we, you know, we're so caught up on the surface level shit that we don't get the opportunity to enjoy being in the pool and take a step back from that stuff and allow life and our, and our essentially our thought or our center of being to just perform and do its thing and go with the flow. Like a river will find its way to the ocean every time. It's not out there working its ass off trying to get to the ocean. It's going to hit the rocks. It's going to go down 
all the way through, but it's going to be naturally going through. And once I started kind of opening my mind to the idea of, you know, good people to work with will come about, you know, I don't want to be chasing business partners or deals for success. You know what I mean? I'm, that's me hitting my head against the wall. Now in the military, we have this saying, you know, like, Hey, if you can't get through the wall, breach it, you know? And I think that's a lot of fun way. That's a fun way to look at it, but you know, we can't be, we can't be really hitting our head against the wall, trying to make something that's not producing. And it, I think I, I can speak for myself that my body really appreciates my slowing down, going with the flow and allowing things to happen or, or manifest on its own. Yeah. And uh, when you stop and you get out of the way, you allow that energy to flow. You allow the magic to happen and manifest a lot quicker half the time. Like there is a lot of place for hard work and willpower and, and doing stuff. Like it's not like you can't, if you're trying to accomplish a goal, you can't just sit around twiddling your thumbs, meditating on how it's going to happen. I mean, Sometimes that works. And I actually, I mean, I, I have witnessed manifestation work in that way where you kind of are just thinking about it. But, uh, but I found the real manifestation is when you combine action and doing stuff with whatever it is you're trying to manifest. So for example, the company that we have right now, Podcast Powertrain, my business partners and I are trying to grow it to at least 3 million. So we could just sit around and wait for that to happen. But uh, if we worked on it every day, it's obviously going to happen a lot faster. Right. But, uh, but you can't, you can't wear yourself thin, you know, you can't just be working fucking constantly hour after hour, day after day, you've got to take a break. You've got to, uh, and also it should be fun. Like whatever you're doing it should be fun. I mean, I basically get to be a professional podcaster and it's awesome. Like, you know, I get to do stuff like this all day. This is the fourth podcast I've gone on this week. And um, it's been fun, you know, like I get to connect with podcasters all day and it's awesome. So it doesn't feel like work, you know, like compared to the military and shit like that. Like you gotta, um, yeah, you gotta find what actually you enjoy doing and then do that. Right on, man. Yeah. I want to, I want to dive. I want to ask you more about your podcast and your book. I want you, I, I really liked how you're uh, publishing your book before, but before we get into that, I saw something the other day. It was like, um, you still need to plant your seed. You know that by, you know, you know, by watering it and planting the seed, you know, a tree will grow, but what happens underneath the soil, you don't see, you know, there's things that are happening to, for that seed to turn into a tree or a fruit, whatever it is that you're planting that you don't see, but you know that it's happening. So that, that analogy jumped in my head when we were just talking about everything that we were talking about. So praying, manifesting, you know, hoping, creating the whole thing, but you got to do the work, you know, you got to get your schedule out there. You got to have the post out there. You got to connect with people and then see where it goes from there. And you're absolutely right, man. It is when you love what you do, you'll never work a day in your life. And this is incredible to be, I mean, COVID, I, you know, I'm sorry for all the, you know, the deaths or, you know, the loss that's happened and a lot of the frustration that's open happened over these last couple of years, but being able to work from home with my family and do what I want and design my schedule and live a life, like doing things like this, going to school, reading things that I want to learn about, you know, looking at real estate, all the things that I've been doing, jujitsu, like I said, like I might be caught up trying to work three jobs or something like that, trying to provide for my family spread thin. Whereas this really allowed me to be central resourceful from home and then still have a global reach, like with people like you around and around the world. So with that being said, um, why don't you tell us about your book, your philosophy behind your book and how you're writing it. And then, you know, I want to learn, hear more about your podcast. So the book, I'm basically self-publishing it as I write it on my website. So you can go to beyondhomosapien.com and you can read about it there. So um, the book in question um, it's going to be called the master plan to save the world. And what I realized, man, was I was writing it and I, I have quite a bit of it written. Um, but as I was writing it and as I was doing it, I was just writing a whole lot about how people need to take action and they, you know, got to get started on all these different things. And that's really the thing that kind of was the kicker. And then as I was writing it, I was like, holy crap, here I am spending you know weeks and months writing this book about how people need to take action and start businesses 
I was like, what if I publish this book as I'm taking action, starting businesses? That way I'm literally just documenting the process through the book and I'm being the example. Um, Cause at first I kind of had this idea of like, okay, I'll publish the book. The book is the, the roadmap, you know, it's the strategy of what we should do. And then I was like, man, someone's going to read this book and be like, okay, what is, what businesses has this guy started? You know what I'm saying? So instead I'm kind of publishing it a chapter at a time as I go. So um, there's two, only two chapters published right now on beyondhomosapien.com. Uh, but I, I think you just inspired me to publish another chapter because I do have more written. I just need to go in there and kind of update it and tidy it up a bit and get it posted. But um yeah, so stay tuned for that. It's kind of, a, again, I'm self-publishing it on the website as I write it. Like whenever it's all done, I'm sure I'll have it available like as a individual book or something. But right now it's just coming out basically like one blog post at a time. And uh, yeah, the whole concept is gonna be, you know, starting businesses because at the end of the day, what we need is uh, more education. We need to completely revolutionize our education systems and go about it a completely different way. And the best way to do that, I think, is by starting businesses and putting people in those businesses to train them and give them a stake in the profit and give them a part of the outcome while they're learning. So for example, our company Podcast Powertrain, you know, we do podcast production, we do advertising, um, and we do, uh, we help, you know, we do coaching, we do consulting with, with podcast hosts and stuff like that. So, um, you know, someone could, for example, be involved in some, one of these, these education programs, and uh, they could then come in and get basically an internship to learn the trade and learn the skills that they need to go on and, uh, and then do it themselves. So it's almost like a, a way where we can uh, integrate education and entrepreneurship together uh, with the intention being of helping that person start their own business and uh, coaching them along the way for free, uh, basically. And then um, Dude, the, the idea that I had for, for that kind too. of this. For what? What do you, for. Sorry. Uh, There's a no, little bit ahead. of lag there. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I was just looking into this too. So I saw it in the one of Facebook groups <clears throat> is that you can register yourself as a, forgive my language here, but you can register yourself as a type of entity or a business where you can get paid for that internship for, as an education uh, structure, the VA will pay you for that student. And then you just have to report the hours and what they're kind of working on. It's not super extensive. They're, they have a slideshow. I probably have it. I'll share it with you. Um, or actually, Yeah, I, dude, that I would be amazing. It. Yeah. So it's a way for you to still give, you know, still do exactly what you're doing. And then still also as a business owner who's trying to make a profit and grow your your mission, the VA will actually pay you to do that as long and then provide. There's so much transition resources happening for the military right now. It's incredible. So that's a great way for you to do both things. Dude, well, please send that to me, man. Thanks for bringing that up. I didn't know about that. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the vision here is uh, having, in a sense, like a university of the future that's run uh, I mean, we might meet up in person throughout the year, but for the most part, it would be online. And the idea would be we help you start your own business and help you start something in your own space and then take a profit share with you. So that way there's we have an incentive in, in helping, basically. You know, so that way that's kind of how you pay your, your tuition at the university is through a uh, profit share. And uh, obviously wouldn't take a majority, but just something to basically cover, you know, the costs of doing everything. And also because then it's uh, uh, the way that the university system is structured right now. It's like the colleges have no stake in whether or not you actually succeed. So imagine if instead of paying a tuition, the deal was, hey, the college is going to get paid 10% of whatever you make in your first job after college. I bet we'd have a very different education system if that's how colleges made money. So that's kind of the model that we're trying to shift to. It's like, hey, we're going to train you up for free, and then we're going to place you in a position where you can make money. The only way we're going to get paid as an educational institution is if you're successful, and then we're still only going to take a small cut, basically. And because uh, that's all that I'll believe that we'll need, because the whole idea is that if you're teaching people what works, they should be able to go. And, and obviously if you have the right people, you know, if you're working with the right, the right students, 
um, they should be wildly successful with whatever it is that you show them. And, uh, you know, that should be more than enough to cover any tuition costs. You know what I mean? So that's kind of the long-term vision is to have something like that. And the book is basically me documenting that process. Yeah, I'd be careful with the, so the only thing that jumps out to me is like, you know, because they're, because not everybody, education is such a great business industry is because only a small portion of people will actually take action on what it is that they learn, you know? So it's like, you know, that's just, that's just the facts. Data doesn't lie. You know, there's a small percentage of people who attend a workshop who are actually going to go and use the skills that they learn in there. And so like from a, from a institutional standpoint, business or academic, like, you'd have to consider not you, but anybody who's considering this uh, model is like the startup costs, you know, the time that you're putting into these students and how you're going to have that all ongoing throughout the process up until that they graduate or complete your program in which you would have any monies to take a percentage of, you know, that, that process between A and C is what's jumping out at me. Yeah. So uh, what I'm doing right now, actually, is I'm starting up a mastermind uh, called the Phoenix Mastermind. And uh, right now you can go onto the website beyondhomosapien.com and you can join. And it's basically the exact same deal, except you'll just work with me personally. And uh, there's a tuition cost right now because that's honestly how I'm weeding it out. Like in the beginning, it's a tuition cost of $444 one-time payment. Um, or you can set up a payment plan if you need that. But the idea is, yeah, in the beginning, you got to have a stake in the outcome. So right now, as we're just kind of getting this off the ground, if you want to join the mastermind, there is that one-time cost to basically uh, account for what you're saying, you know, is, uh, yeah, because people have to have some skin in the game or else they're not going to, to do it, you know. So that's kind of how we're getting this thing started and uh, is through a mastermind, basically. And uh, you can join it if you want. All the info is on the website. And, um, you know, we're just getting started. See where this thing takes off and how, how it does so. But again, going back to, to this book, you know, I'm really just trying to kind of surrender to the process and watch it all unfold. And the more I do that, the better it all seems to go. I really like how you're writing your book, too. And for people who are hesitant about writing a book as well or... or you know, ch- chicken noodle soup, man, I learned, I, I did uh, the one funnel away challenge with click funnels. And I learned all the stuff, like all the, th- the thoughts behind how Disney made its movies from the Gutenberg press and like free stories out there. You know, I'm not going to go super into details of it, but like I learned about how a lot of these businesses and these, or these corporations have gotten in, the, in the, the game. And essentially, you know, you can make a, you can make, you can write a book out there. You can put, make a Facebook post and be like, Hey, how do you feel about X, Y, Z? And then you'll see the number of results and you can be like, hey, you know, 75% of people asked about how they feel about peanut butter and jellies feel this way. And you could write a book about that. You know, chicken noodle soup is a collection of stories or experiences framed in a way that answers a certain question. And so what I really like about what you're doing is that you're getting the opportunity to create the content that's going to establish and grow your brand You're going to create that relationship with your audience about, hey, this is what this person's talking about in this blog post today. So you have daily interaction or however your scheduling is. And then over a period of time, you're not just making one, 10, 100 pieces of content. You're making a bigger piece of cheese down the road, which is your book, which is you're going to sell for more, which is collections and maybe revisions and updates or what you've learned since all of those blog posts in this book. And so the whole point of what you know, the biggest point in content creation is to be making the content so you can always have something to reference and build and uh, rebuild and redesign and then put it out there for the public, not just for a profit, but to make that impact. And that's what I really like about what we're talking about here. You know, my experience with the, when I first started doing this type of commentary, I already told you that I felt really limited on my beliefs, on my ability to do so. And then once I started taking the workshops and the masterminds, I love the idea of hosting a workshop in a mastermind. I tried to do a couple of these last few years and they just weren't as as successful as I want them to be. And part of the reason is that as I was discussing with people, I started seeing a lot of negative feedback about coaches and like how anybody can be a coach and this, that, and the other. And that that was starting to land on me. And I was like, you know what? I might have spent all this money to learn this information. I might have, I might be really good at what I do, but I was start, it was starting to eat away at me personally. I was like, you know, I feel like I need to have something more behind me than 
being a guy, or being a facilitator in front of the room and being like, yes, you too can be a success knowing what I just left. And that was my biggest thing here. And that's actually why I'm working on what I'm working on and doing the way that I'm doing it. But I really look forward to coming from that place of service again and being able to be like, you know what? These are the books and the resources that I've done. These are the people that I've connected with. And then you can talk to these people and this is a result. And these are the results from my people. These are our results, take it or leave it, you know, and then really go from there and not really have to worry about that anymore. Yes, sir. That's the way, man. That is it. Do you have I've bongos playing behind you? It's like there. it's like every time you you like you drop wisdom, I hear bongos play. <laughs> That's really interesting. Uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's I've like a, a chair cat, or something. I've got like a that. cat meowing. It might be the chair. Okay. <laughs> like write that one down. All right. Cool. Well, so I'm definitely going to, I want to make sure I get those lists of resources that you list up, not just for myself personally, but for, so we can add them to the descriptions of where I put them. Um, YouTube, Anchor FM, and just any, any other place. Um, man, I could go on and talk about this topic for a long time, but I know we're running short. So Paul, you know, is there anything else that you want to cover? Like, is there anything else that you want to bring up? Anything else that I help support? Uh, no, man, I would say just like if anyone's listening to this, definitely check out my podcast beyond homo sapien. If this has resonated, go to beyond homo sapien.com. I'll send all the links to Robert so it can be in the show notes below. But um, yeah, just know like, hey, if you're going through this, if you kind of are going through this crazy time collectively, there's a lot of people that are going through this with you and um, a lot of people who have walked the path before and uh None of us are, uh, what I found is the path is ongoing. Like, it's not like, oh, you arrive at a destination and there you go. Like, no, it's still going. Like, there's no, it's just a journey. There's different levels to this evolution. And uh, yeah, again, like this is nothing new. And it's something that uh, there's, there's a lot of information out there on and more coming out all the time if you just go seeking for it, if you just go looking. So um, start looking and start doing some research and connect with people who are, who are, you know, putting out the truth like Robert and, uh, yeah, thanks for listening. Thank you, Paul. I had a lot of fun. We should do this again. You know, next time you, you know, add a, anytime you add a couple of blog posts or if you hit another point or anything like that with the masterminds, let me know and we'll, we'll, we'll do it. Um, thank you so much. Like I said, for being on the show and sharing your wisdom, speaking your truth and the compliment. I really appreciate it. Uh, everyone who's listening, thank you listening for, thank you for tuning into the LaFrance paradigm, wherever you're tuning in from. Um, I'm going to let, I'm going to let you go. All right. Go out there and take action. And they say that the rising tide lifts all ships and that courage is contagious. So, uh, help us help you help your friends. All right. Take care, everyone.